Huh. Yeah, you can 3D print upside down. Kind of cool, huh? Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today we're going to be talking about 3D printing upside down. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. How is something like that even possible? Why is it possible? And what kind of things do we need to know and do to make it happen? Now, warning, quick disclaimer, something like this is only possible with plastic FDM 3D printing. This type of 3D printing uses spools of filament and it basically melts it into a shape. Something like this wouldn't work with resin 3D printing, which uses liquid. So if you flip that upside down, it would make a mess, probably break the printer. So just be warned, FDM printing only. To make all this start happening, we first need an FDM 3D printer. And a good place to get one is actually from today's sponsor, Banggood.com. Banggood.com is a global online shop offering one-stop shopping experiences. From consumer electronics, tools, home appliances, toys, sports, to clothing, everything can be delivered with just a few clicks. Banggood and Klarna are having a joint sale event from November 25th to December 31st, so don't miss out. All you have to do is select the Klarna payment platform at checkout and you can save up to $20 on orders over $140. There's links for all of this down below, so please go check it out and thank you again Banggood for sponsoring the video. So, Banggood.com actually sent me an Ender 3 Pro for this experiment and this is what we're to be using. So let's get this printer built and figure out a way to suspend it upside down and I think I have a good idea where to start. Okay, so believe it or not, this was actually the easy part. And before you ask about the elephant in the room, or I guess the ghost, Creality likes to make black printers with black frames, so they're really hard to see, but hopefully this gives you an idea that there is an Ender 3 actually hanging upside down from this Creality CR10 S5. So I've gone and suspended the printer upside down. I moved the uh, control board over here just so I could see the screen because I don't want to read upside down. And I got the spool holder kind of moved over there. Nothing really crazy, very easy to do. But in order for this to work, we need to level the bed. But what does it mean to actually level the bed? To better understand leveling, we're gonna take a look at a standard Ender 3 that's not hanging upside down. So what is bed leveling and why is it so confusing to beginners? I see it all the time in some of the new 3D printing groups. I'll actually see people take a spirit or a bubble level and put it on their printer bed. And if I'm looking at it right now, Honestly, the bed is level, but this isn't the type of leveling people talk about in relation to 3D printers. Typically, this is something you grab when you wanna hang something like a picture on the wall or maybe a fancy plaque. What we're actually talking about in relation to 3D printing is tramming. Now, if you're familiar with CNC's or lathes, you're probably familiar with that word, but how is it different than leveling? When we're talking about 3D printing leveling, we're not actually talking about its relation to gravity on Earth. That doesn't matter. What really matters with a 3D printer is the relation of the hot end, or more specifically, the nozzle where the plastic comes out, to the bed itself. The nozzle should be the same distance anywhere over the bed if it's only moving in the X and Y direction. Now, I know this might all sound a little confusing, so let me show you a visual example. Now, let's pretend that this sticky note right here is your 3D printer bed, and this marker is the nozzle that puts out filament. Now, this is gonna be a little bit backwards, and I'll kind of explain as I go on. If this marker is the same distance from the sticky note, it'll make the same image the entire time, right? 
but if the marker starts to get a little bit too high from the sticky note, it won't make any marks at all, or if it's too close, it'll start to blow it out and make a much bigger line. Now we want the marker to be the same distance over everywhere on the bed, and that's what those little adjustment knobs underneath your printer are. They let you rotate the bed around to change the distance from the nozzle. Now I've already gone through and perfectly trammed this bed. It's level, right? Well, let's take this and maybe put it right here. Now this bed is trammed, and according to the bubble level, it's actually level in relation to Earth's gravity. But what happens if we go and spin the printer around? It's no longer level to earth, but the printer's still tram. It doesn't matter what orientation I hold this printer, upside down, weird 45 degree angles, I can do whatever I want with it. The relation of the nozzle to the printer bed hasn't changed. So now theoretically, if we hang this from the ceiling or for example, another 3D printer, it should work, right? Now let's get back to the other 3D printer we currently have suspended upside down. We have what we need to make this work and we have a better understanding of why theoretically it should work. Now all that's left to do is, well, test it out. With the 3D printer being suspended upside down, your first layer is more important than ever. I have a few videos on how to get a good first layer and I'll link those down below. So really make sure it's good because you need to build on a good foundation, or I guess in this case, the ceiling. Now, unfortunately with 3D printing upside down, your risk for a catastrophic failure does increase. Instead of a print failure just sitting on the bed while it's printing, now it's gonna fall into the extruder in the hot end and it's gonna get caught in the fans, it's gonna melt on the block. So maybe be careful with this and again, make sure that first layer is good. But the plus side of this is theoretically, this might help with long overhangs or bridges and might even make you need less supports when printing. Wow! If you've been following NASA's endeavors up on the ISS, they have a 3D printer up there that they use quite frequently. And the reason that it works so well, even though it's hurtling through space at 4.67 miles per second, is the bed is properly trammed. Or in 3D printer terms, level. That does it for this video, guys. I had a lot of fun with this little experiment. And if you have any other 3D printing ideas or things you might think work or may not, please leave them down below in the comments. I'll see what I can get to. One last big shout out to banggood.com. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Guys, please go down below, click the link in the description box and take advantage of that deal they have with Klarna before it ends. That does it for this video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.